Night Stalker. I flew through the air over Las Pegasus, and rage was the only thing I could feel as the flashes of Petal's death replayed repeatedly in my head. The damned zebras took her away from me. I had done everything I could to keep her as far away from the war as I could. I helped her get a job at Stable Tech. I made sure she was always away from any battle that came near one of their projects. I killed and fought and bled to keep my last bit of family safe. I know she wasn't my blood. Her parents weren't really my own either. But neither was Granny in Griffinstone. Yet, when she finally passed, it hurt just as bad as when my parents froze to death in the mountains, using their own bodies to keep the small cave we sheltered in blocked from the storm that eventually killed them. When my adopted father died last year in that bombing, and earlier this year when my adoptive mother died from a strange illness, I vowed I'd do everything to make sure that Petal wouldn't leave this world until long after I did. Why do I keep on living when I throw myself into some of the most dangerous situations imaginable and good, loving ponies like my sister die? It isn't fair. I should be the one dead on that battlefield, not her. She was trying to save ponies. She never hurt anyone. She was good. I'm the monster. I'm the darkness. I'm the Night Stalker. I should be the one to die. Then maybe everything would be better. Or at least, very, very least, I'd put an end to all the pain and loss. It's not like I'm suicidal or anything like that, but I just wish one time my luck would just run out in a fight and I'd finally find the peace I've been looking for. At least in death, I wouldn't have to worry about the children, the princesses, the war, or my feelings for her. At the thought of the only real thing in my life I truly cared about, it came to light that I knew right then that this is what I was fighting for. It didn't matter that I was with some pony or not. My feelings for Greta never changed. No matter how much I tried to tell myself, it was just because I grew up around her and that was all. I'd never... Tell myself, tell her that, she'd kill me. Same for Lightning, who I also did care about very much. But my love for her wasn't the same as the deep longing I had for that one griffin. If I have to keep on fighting, then I'll fight to make sure the world is a better place. For her. And for Lightning. I said before spotting the zebras we'd captured in the small force still trying to fight my troops. They couldn't win now. They had too few. But leading them was a zebra that I knew thanks to Noir. I growled in anger as the overly large and muscular zebra prince charged the line, killing three ponies before I could do anything to stop him. I dove for the ground, spotting Babs towards the back of my troops, missing a foreleg, and still yelling curses at the zebras as medical unicorns tried to pull her away from the fight and get her out of her power armor. I activated my comm as the ground came rushing up to me. Amethyst Star, I need to talk to Noir. Sorry, Captain, but he kind of escaped, she said. What? How? I asked, baffled at how he could do anything with that collar around his neck. I'll explain later, but I kind of gave him permission to go. He knows, I said he knows how to stop the attack, she said. Damn it all, I yelled, cutting off the comm. Fine, I guess we'll see if he can be trusted or not then. I slammed into the ground right in front of the attacking prince and yelled, Hey, motherfucker, I'm going to tear off your head with my bare hooves. The bastard started to laugh as the sirens around the city continued to blare and the fire kept on burning away the prosperity. Night Stalker, ten months later. I walked into the hospital room, putting a fake smile on my face. 
That was what most days were like for me now. Fake smiles. Fake confidence in the war. Sitting on the hospital bed holding a small bundle was Manette with Amethyst Star in a seat next to her bed. Thunder Lane, Noir, and my wife Lightning Dust were already there. I came to the bed, saying, Well now, don't keep me in surprise. Did you have a colt or a filly? Manette gave me that dazzling smile that was one of the few things in this world that can truly make me feel a bit of happiness. As she said, A colt. We decided to name him Dwarfstar. Stupid name if you ask me, Thunderlane said in a grouchy mood as ever. Not today, please, Thunderlane, Lightning said as she sat on the other side of Manette's bed, a hoof resting protectively over a bump on her own stomach. Today's a happy day, something we don't get very often. I just think it's wrong for a same-sex couple to be having foals is all. I mean, who's going to teach the kid how to be strong with two mothers anyway? He said. I just rolled my eyes, doing my best not to hit the asshole. Well, I think it's great. And with two powerful unicorns like yourself, I believe he's going to be a really strong stallion someday. Manette smiled again. Thunderlane, I don't care what you think. I'm just happy that I'm finally done with carrying this little colt around. The last three months, he just kept kicking me over and over again in the ribs. I just can't believe it. I didn't see that you two were, uh, you know, doing whatever you lesbians do for so long, Thunderlane said. But he followed it up with a small smile, so I restrained from hitting him. Again. What we lesbians do? We spend time together, a lot, and have sex, Manette said jokingly. Thunderlane snorted. I know how babies are made. You don't need to explain it to me. We got a sperm donor, you idiot, so clearly you don't know how it works, Manette said. But, but unicorn magic? Thunderlane stuttered out. It doesn't work that way, Manette said with a smile. Still, though, wish I would have known about you two, Thunderlane said. We just didn't want any pony to think that we were getting distracted while we were working. You know, there were a couple rules about working together and all that, Amethyst said shyly. Manette started to laugh. I'm sure the captain, oh, I mean general here, knew way before we told him. I rolled my eyes at the stupid new rank I'd been given after I'd killed that damn prince and saved what was left of lost Pegasus, but then smiled again, this time for real. Yeah, I knew since day one, but I really didn't care. You two never let it stop you from working hard, and for that, it wasn't worth fussing over. Even if the rule's in place, I started dating Lightning, and now we're married. Yeah, I still don't see how you get away with that, boss, Babs said as she walked into the room behind me, her metallic leg making a small ping with every step. Babs, Manette said with unwavering joy. We haven't seen you since a few weeks after the battle. Where have you been? Long story. I had to, well, just trust me, it's a long story. She said, looking over at me with a pleading look. I knew what the story was. She found out on the day she was getting that cybernetic leg that she was also pregnant. She stayed away to hide the pregnancy for as long as she could now, and now her son was only a month old. Only Lightning and I knew about it, and the fact that she was retiring from the Children of the Night. I promised her that I wouldn't tell the others, not until she was ready. Lightning changed the subject by asking me, So dear, where is Greta and Cloudy Nights? Cloudy said something about having to deal with something back home. She's using her leave time. I think her mother passed away. Greta is overseeing the final touches on the chamber under the base. I said, Oh no, I hope Cloudy's okay. I know she said her father was a dick, but she said her mom was always very sweet. Amethyst said. 
I have no idea. But if she doesn't check in tomorrow, I'll go check on her. She grew up not too far from here, I said before going over to my wife and giving her a kiss, before moving down to look at Dwarf Star. Well, he's definitely a strong-looking colt. Kind of small, though, huh? Who's his father? Amethyst is the one who answered. No idea. Min and I didn't want to know. That's why we used the donor bank that Fluttershy set up. Min decided she wants to be the one to carry our foal. Minette yawned. Yeah, and it was a mistake. You can have the next one. We all laughed, and I looked into the eyes of the little colt. One day, little colt, you're going to be something special. I just know it. I'm sure he will. He is a descendant of the Children of the Night, after all. Lightning said with a chuckle. That he is, I said as I ran a hoof over my wife's belly. And soon we'll have one of our own. Lightning was about to say something when the communicator I always had on with me these days went off. I sighed as Lightning said, Go to your job, we all understand. Every pony nodded at me, and I sighed as even louder as I headed out of the room. On the way out, I put a hoof on Bab's large shoulder. While I'm gone, you should tell them. They deserve to know. I know, sir. I know, she said before I left the room. I ducked into an empty room and answered the communicator. This is General Nightstalker. To my surprise, Greta's voice echoed out of the communicator. Hey, Nightstalker, we've got a problem. I sighed. What now? Did one of the workers try to sneak away again with photos? I told you before, if you capture them, destroy the photos and have one of the unicorns wipe their memory. I wish, she said. I'm not even at the work site now. What? I told you I needed one of us there at all times while we finish up the last part of the project, I said. Yeah, I know. And I wouldn't have left, but I got a communication from one of our contacts. You need to get back to the Lucky Horseshoe right now, she said. Why? I asked. Because Princess Luna and Goldenblood are heading there right now. From what I heard, Goldenblood found out all about Falling Shadows, and he's trying to get Luna to shut it down, she said. Damn that snake, I yelled before taking a deep breath. Fine, I'm on my way. Can you meet me on the roof? Yeah, I'll be there in five. See you soon, sir, she said before cutting off connection. Boss, is there anything that I can do to help? I heard Noir say from the door, making me nearly jump out of my skin. Damn it! I hate it when you do that, I said. My apologies, Night Stalker, but you know us zebras are naturally silent trotters. He said with a small grin. Yeah, I know, but still, I hate it when you do that. Anyway, yes. I was just about to come get you. I need you to go to the Lucky Horseshoe and get to the sub-basement. Make sure no pony can find that part of the project while I find out what the hell Golden Blood is up to. I said as I headed past him and out the door. You think he has an alternative plan, sir? The zebra said, following behind me. It's Golden Blood. If he's going to the Lucky Horseshoe with Luna, I can guarantee you that he has one of his OIA lackeys trying to sneak into the lower floors just to see what we're up to, I said. What do you want me to do if I find said lackey? He asked. I looked over my shoulder at him. Kill him. Why else would I be sending you instead of some pony else on the team? He grinned. Sometimes I think that you only think of me as your personal assassin. No. I see you as one of the few zebras I can trust. One that can get things done. If I needed an assassin, I'd go myself, I said. You do have a point, he said with a laugh. I will keep you updated on what I find. 